Good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who do not know me, I'm the mayor of Eastleigh, councillor Darshan Man, and as mayor, a chair meeting of the full council. Apologies that the mayor is not here this evening, but as we are holding this meeting virtually, I hope that you will agree that it is appearing on the slide is sufficient. Welcome to this evening's full council meeting, which is being broadcast and recorded via Microsoft Teams live. If we experience a connection problem, this event will be paused. If a councillor loses connection or joins later, I will ask them to introduce or reintroduce themselves for the benefit of the viewers. In the unlikely event of myself losing connection, the deputy mayor, Councillor Cynthia Garten, will take over. Councillors are reminded to keep themselves muted and with their cameras off unless they are called to speak. Please remember to request to speak via the chat function, which is being monitored by a number of officers. Please do not put comments in the chat as they may cause some requests to be lost. We will take counselors in the order in which they appear in the chat. Should we inadvertently miss you, please indicate again. When counselors are speaking, in the absence of the traffic lights, the chief executive, Nick Tastian, will warn you when you have 30 seconds remaining. At times, I will ask officers to explain where we are in the process. So I apologize if the meeting takes longer than usual. The voting process during this meeting will be mix of recorded votes during the budget debate, roll calls, and unmuting to signal agreement. Give the technical Given the technical issues that have been experienced with Microsoft Teams Live, it is not currently possible to use the electronic voting system. Item one. We, we have received no requests for pu public participation. Item two, the mayor's announcements. Before we begin, it is customary for the mayor to give an overview of recent highlights in the civic calendar. The period running up to the festive season is normally extremely busy for the mayor and deputy mayor, but once again, and for obvious reasons, most of our engagements have been put on hold since the last full council meeting. So there is little to report in terms of getting out and about around the borough to meet people and visit community groups and businesses. However, I have been involved in a good amount of virtual activity. In no November, the council funded the 11th annual youth conference, which brought students from schools and colleges together virtually to explore the timely theme of keeping safe during COVID. Over 100 pupils and professionals from all the schools, colleges, and youth agencies operating in the borough attended. They discussed subjects such as mental health, online safety, and relationship. In December, I was pleased to present a local hero award to Sharon Malcolm. Sharon has been a lollipop lady in Eastleigh for 30 years, and I surprised her on her last day at work before she retired. We will be presenting more local of hero awards over the next few months, and you can still nominate people who have given their time to help others during the pandemic. On the subject of heroes, I wrote a letter of congratulation to borough based mountaineer Nims Purja MBE, whose latest achievement was as part of a team that became the first to reach the summit of K2, the world's second highest mountain in winter. Nims had previously conquered all 14 of the world's 8,000 meter plus peaks in a record time of six months and six days. I was delighted to receive notification that the Barrow Council had received a volunteering award from Mountbatten, Hampshire for the work 
carried out by our direct services team on the upkeep of the gardens at their amazing West End Hospice. This is the award. So it will go to direct services. The Citizens Advice Bureau is also doing excellent work in supporting people through this difficult period. 2020 was the East Leap Branch's 80th anniversary. Unfortunately, the celebration had to, we had planned had to be postponed, but we hope that we will be able to rearrange it or find another way to celebrate in the near future. On a sad note, we were very sorry to hear of the recent passing of Len Welch. Len was mayor's escort in 1999 and 2000 and 2015 16 when his wife Jane was mayor. Our thoughts are with Jane, their family, and friends. We also would also like to pay tribute to Eastley Town Ranger Neil Vincent known as Vinnie, who passed away recently after a short illness. His colleagues at the Eastleigh Bid have set up a just giving page to raise money for a bench in his memory. Finally, can I come once again take this opportunity to pay tribute to the many residents across the borough, our friends in local charities and other organizations, as well as council staff who have risen so brilliantly to the challenges presented by pandemic in supporting our communities and businesses. I'm hopeful that with the rollout of the vaccine, mayor's engagements will soon resume as soon as possible across the borough, and I will be able to meet and say thank you in person. On behalf of the borough, to the many people carrying out such important work, Item three, so, apologies. Mr. Mayor, um, we have apologies for count, from Councillor Doogie, Councillor Gorevsky and Councillor Rushton. Are there any other further apologies? No. So no, Mr. Mayor. Item four, councillors, next we need to confirm as a correct record the minutes of council meeting held on the 12th November 2020. May I have a proposal, please? I'll propose those, Mr. Mayor. Seconder. Happy to propose them, um, second them, Mr. Mayor. Are there any questions? So no, Mr. Mayor. There are no questions. All right, councillors, we now need to vote. Remembering to unmute your microphones. All those in favour? All those against? Any abstentions? I'm afraid I have to abstain, Mr. Mayor. I wasn't there. Councillor Dean. That's Councillor Radine. That's recording, Mr. Mayor. All right. All right. Item five. Declarations of interest. In respect of declarations of interest, councillors, you're reminded that you must declare any personal or pecuniary interests in accordance with the council's code of conduct and standing orders. Councillors have been asked to declare interest in advance of this meeting, and these were circulated by email in advance of the meeting. Do any councillors have any additional interest to declare? Mr. No. no. Item six. Leaders report. There will be no leaders report on this occasion. Item seven. Recommendations requiring decision. These will be dealt with at the relevant agenda items. Item eight. General Fund Revenue Budget 21-22. Councillors are reminded that the budget debate process is outlined on a separate document in your agenda packs. Item 
and has also been emailed to you. In line with the process laid, we will now start the debate and, and would usually commence with public participation, but nobody has a register to speak. I now call on the leader of the council to start the debate. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor, and I'll move the recommendations from Cabinet and I'll speak after a second has been achieved. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, happy to, uh, to second and also reserve my right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. This has been a most difficult and challenging year for not just our borough, but for the country and world. And planning a budget for this year is unlike anything this council or our staff have ever had to face. I said much the same at the County Council this morning. It's true for us all. So before commenting on any of the budget papers, please let me put on the record my thanks, and I'm sure from all councillors to all of the staff team that have had to work miracles to have detailed information in front of us all today and to keep the show on the road over the last year. And let me again repeat the message you gave at our first virtual meeting late last spring, as we were still in the first lockdown and had little perception that so far into the future, we will be into a third lockdown with some form of restrictions still to last for months and a pandemic that's in evolving to become endemic to require serious attention for many years into the future. So that is again to thank all staff across the public sector that have gone more than the extra mile to keep services going, not least of course in our health service where I've even come across operating theatre staff volunteering extra shifts to carry out vaccinations. But it's all frontline workers, uh, from shop assistants to postal staff and bin crews, and the teachers that are now getting back to planning for full classrooms. Deeply challenging times, and I'm sure we all have enormous respect for all and beyond to those thousands of businesses around our, our area that are still struggling to know if they can keep going and retain staff in, for many sectors, a battered economy. But here we are. And I make those comments because they matter, but also because they inform my thoughts and the Liberal Democrat administration's thoughts on this budget. Because we have a task beyond our usual approach to governance, uh, which is usually best summed up as to fix problems and to improve the quality of life for our residents, businesses and visitors. And that's because this year, our challenge is to help our community respond to fear and uncertainty caused by COVID-19 and its variants, and to reach out with hope for the future for a vision and direction from those charged with governance. And I'm sure, Mr. Mayor, that we can all rise to that challenge. So this budget is very different from a conventional budget in that uh, to respect we have to follow the level of uncertainty we face from the pandemic, it broadly rolls forward uh, from the current year's budget. But it's much more of a budget estimate as traditionally budgets used to be, given the number of current unknowns and degrees of uncertainties on new costs naturally rising savings, future government funding and legislative announcements and the unpredictable nature of the pandemic as it moves into its endemic phase and whatever form of business as usual we, we find to cope with the virus. What has not changed is the fundamentally strong financial position of our council. Our prudent financial management over many years has created substantial property and investment reserves alongside a net contribution each year from our investments after in interest costs of £12 million, a sum that still exceeds our income from council tax, from business rates and from fees and charges. This fundamental soundness that it helped us to be one of the first councils in the country to have our 2019 to 20 accounts signed off by our auditors means that we can, for the 18th year, deliver on our promise of keeping council tax reducing in real terms with it being set at 1% below inflation. Due to December's uh, consumer prices index being only 0.6%, this means we can actually reduce council tax this year by 0.4%. So giving not just a real term reduction, but a cash reduction for most residents this year. At a time when so many household budgets are truly squeezed by erratic and uncertain income, I hope this decrease will help just a little, not least, given the very substantial increases being levied by the County Council and by the Police and Crime Commissioner. Our usual policy of maintaining our general fund reserve above £1 million 
and increasing discretionary fees and charges to achieve a 2% yield helps maintain our overall financial position. The report to Cabinet summarises a range of pressures and variations, and these have all been accommodated in the budget alongside appropriate changes to special expenses. Now, the government has made some contributions to the nearly £10 million expected cost of COVID in the current and new financial year, with a current estimate of around £4.5 million in general grants and reimbursed lost income. Our sound finances and tight cost control have and will manage the gap. We never did get to the will fund whatever it costs pledged by the Chancellor and the Secretary of State early in the pandemic. Uh, so we are more than £5 million down over the course of the last year. What's more, a loan of Hampshire's councils, uh, we sought to compensate our parish councils for lost income with £200,000 of grant in the same proportion as we took ourselves against lost income. No other district or the county council acceded to the government's request to help parishes. This year's local government financial settlement matches the previous year, 2019-20. It's worth noting in today's terms, we have absorbed £10 million of losses in annual government support when compared with 2007-8, immediately before the global financial crash and austerity. Although we have no certainty on government policy on business rates, the expectation of a reset to these rates in 2022-23 will remove growth and create a further financial pressure that could be a further one and a half million pounds compared with the current year's budget. Because we've taken our housing responsibilities seriously, uh, delivering above housing targets to catch up on housing not delivered during previous recessions, we've seen substantial income from new homes bonus, with nearly 16 million pounds of completed and approved schemes and another nearly six million pounds allocated to new affordable housing for rent. And I should add in passing that recent social media commentary by Eastleigh's MP on housing delivery should be taken with a pinch of salt. Over the last 20 years and two housing cycles, a classic boom and bust industry, we've assisted in the delivery of 10,482 homes, which is 524 a year, and on average just 16 homes a year above the government's expectations. What's most important, and I know of concern to councillors and residents, is that we've delivered a thousand affordable homes over the last three years, and that's before we count our new lifetime tenancy market rental homes with their rent to buy option, taking generation rent towards home ownership in a way that few councils in the country can claim. So where does this set of financial data take us? It confirms we have a sound short to medium term financial position, far more secure than most councils. It says we've managed to contain the impact of COVID-19 thanks to the tight control of our costs. It says we need to be alert to future changes to business rates and to keep up our diligent monitoring of Treasury management and future interest rate changes. But it also gives us confidence that our stated pledge to maintain council tax cuts in real terms for 20 years running is on target. Turning to the coming year, we face a range of challenges. First, is continuing to contain COVID-19 by supporting vaccination centres, by continuing to maintain safe messages on social distancing, and by new initiatives such as the testing centre at the point that Councillor Tonya Craig and I were pleased to check out on Monday. And I put, put up, want to put on record our thanks again to all our staff who put in extra hours and volunteered uh, to be seconded to the testing centre to get this going. It really is remarkable at such short notice. The second is reopening a new world beyond lockdowns, seeking to help and support easily businesses, clubs and organisations and residents as they readjust to a newly restarted world and doing everything we can to help avert the need for lockdown for next winter or earlier. We really must not be complacent. Thirdly, we need to focus on delivery of our services, of our capital programme and helping create a sense of hope emerging from the trauma of the last year. It is this focus on delivery and on hope that I want to concentrate this evening. For our services, we see continuity and change. Continuity in those services we've been able to keep delivering and those that reopen. Change in those areas where we can be proud to deliver service enhancements, such as the new waste collections that commence next week with glass collection every two weeks alongside recyclables. 
Council Rupert Curl is overseeing this project alongside other innovations such as our tree nursery that will help to see 160,000 trees planted in our borough as part of our climate emergency action plan. A further area of change is our vehicle fleet, increasingly moving to electric vehicles. Now, I'm sure I saw Councillor David Airy with an early electric waste vehicle. I'm pretty sure he wasn't driving. Well, at least I hope so. With the move to electric vehicles, we're delighted to be in one of two districts uh, that were able to step in uh, at speed and with, uh, with enthusiasm to be part of a first on-street charging project in central Eastleigh. With the start of the rollout of commercial charging points at key town locations, we will be taking forward a programme to get charging points available across the borough over the next two years, as the end of the era of oil consuming and polluting personal vehicles starts its journey into history. And that's something we can be proud of. For our capital programme, our emphasis is on maintaining our infrastructure first approach, and it's linked to our housing programme. Councillors Paul Bicknell and Ian Corbyn with their regeneration portfolios will help oversee a large capital programme that's being supplemented by the allocation of developer contributions. Our local area committees are a key part of ensuring these plans progress and detailed reports have started to go to local area committees and will do so again through the March meeting cycle. They are a mass of exciting projects, too many to detail here, but all will help to contribute to that sense of renewal and hope for the future. Charles Ford will see work at Flexford Nature Reserve and Hilton Brew Rec, the car park there, and the emerging exciting project for a new arch theatre. In Eastleigh, major projects alongside our new community at North Stoneham Park include a £300,000 refurbishment of Free Space Skate Park and the start of a new two year improvement programme at Lee Road Recreation Ground. The completion of Fanfare Place in Romsey Road will create new homes in the town centre as will new projects being taken forward of the old post office and smaller sites. We will ensure that major community projects at Bishopstoke, at the Memorial Hall working with the Parish Council and at St Luke's working with the church are able to be taken forward. With the health service, we will continue to work on expansion plans at Stokewood Surgery to help meet the needs of the growing community. In Fair Oak, alongside major play projects, will bring forward the first large open space project linked to One Horton Heath on lands close to the reconfigured Allington Lane. This will be one of the largest parklands in the borough, preserved from housing growth and delivered over one year before work on the first home at One Horton Heath starts. Down the road at Ishim Valley Country Park, major plans to improve our recreation area will be taken forward, with proposals for a major new play space unique in our borough and a range of infrastructure improvements to help visitors to stay longer in our country park oasis. With a new secondary school opening at Deer Park in Hedge End, the first in our borough for over 40 years, we will complete the funding package for major sports pitches and recreation provision for the benefit of the whole community. At Borley Green, we will deliver on long prom promised play provision. In the south of the borough, work will more move forward on the new Windover Meadows Country Park and the Parish Council at Burslem will be supported with funding for a replacement pavilion at Long Lane. We will work with the Parish Councils in Hound and Hamble on improvement packages for a range of their local facilities from a new play area at Station Road to supporting a major set of improvements at Mount Pleasant Recreation Ground. These are all exciting community projects, but our biggest area of delivery is increasingly with housing. One Horton Heath is the standout. This project will deliver an extension to the existing community like no other in the borough, as a development that starts from the perspective of the place that's being created, not with what, what will create the most profit for a remote developer. Higher environmental and space standards with green energy and a default to foot and cycle access, sustainable water features and a real sense of place using existing natural features, retaining trees and old field patterns will demonstrate that with infrastructure first, housing can be an asset for all and be welcomed. It's a big challenge and it's one the major project team are delivering, putting thousands of hours of work into. Some of our housing projects will be assisted by the reopening of a housing revenue account to, to develop our own council houses on a scale not achieved since the 1960s, with a plan for over 1,000 over the coming decade to supplement new homes provided by housing associations on sites being taken forward by the private sector. 
This is truly a revolution in housing provision to meet need and much will dovetail with our social policy area led by Councillor Tina Tamp Campbell that will tackle niche and specialist needs and keep cracking down on homeless. Turning to the economy, Mr Mayor. Economic recovery from COVID and Brexit must be our borough's greatest area of concern over the coming years. We will not know for some months what the real effect of both is on business activity, but we all appreciate, I'm sure, that the retail sector has seen a decade of change in less than a year. Names familiar for a generation are disappearing from our high streets as new online brands emerge. Eastleigh has not had been has not had the impact of some of the biggest closures, such as the collapse of Debenhams or the shrinking of John Lewis, but a significant number of family fav favourites have closed or will do so. Our changing high streets is thus a major, major focus of our attention as we start to adjust to what, to what has often seen as a nighttime economy transferring to the day, with increasing emphasis on the need for public service delivery from health to councils being essential on the high street uh, to the need to secure housing densification. Councillor Derek Pretty is already working in these areas with the bid team and our property and local area teams will need to give this new focus. Cabinet this week gave its unanimous support to the Solent Local Enterprise Partnerships bid for a Solent Freeport, uh, bringing tax advantages to boost trade and create economic growth, not just in Eastleigh, but across the Solent in a unique net zero proposal. For the Eastleigh part of the package, Cabinet were able to support the approach to government to seek to secure the speedier commercial development of the Riverside site, including the North East Business Park of the airport, progress in securing development of a prosperous and financially secure Southampton International Airport, and the construction of the link road to bypass Eastleigh Town Centre, the infamous Chicken or Lane Link Road. The government makes uh, a lot of play about its levelling up of areas not punching their weight. These are not confined to the north of England. Coastal England, including the south coast at the Solent, has levels of deprivation and economic underperformance that match the Red Wall. We must bang the drum for our patch and work to get that message through. Now, unusually, Mr Mayor, this year, we have proposals from the independent group published ahead of the budget, and I'd like to thank the independent group for so doing. Both of the ideas suggested are worthy of thought as the objectives are ones the Liberal Democrat administration share. They're not quite right for the budget, as councillors Tina Campbell and David Aaron will explain, as work is underway in both these areas, positively by an Eastleigh Borough Council team on digital exclusion, and perhaps less so by the County Council on public transport, where the risk is more county cuts. As such, it would be preferable for these amendments to be withdrawn rather than voted down. We're very happy to give an undertaking to keep the independent group involved in both issues over the coming months, not least as the sums of money involved in addressing them are likely to be rather larger than the amounts being proposed. We await with interest any proposals from the Conservative group, and I'll return to these in my submission summation if they are submitted. Now, earlier today, as I mentioned, the County Council set its budget. Uh, sadly, this does not have the optimism and hope for the future of our debate this evening. Government has cut social care councils adrift over the last decade, but equally, the county has not developed a response beyond managing decline and using transformation as a proxy word for cuts. We have said here, and I must say again, that as financially secure as we are, we're not able to fund those cuts by reproviding Act services. But I am proud that Fair Oak Parish Council has taken up the challenge of keeping open its library, and we will help with building repairs. And I'm proud too that Bursland Parish Council has done the same at Lowford, in a facility that this council initially funded just a few years ago. I would like to thank in particular Councillor Nick Caldry and Councillor Steve Holes for being involved in both of those projects. But if we can't compensate for county cuts, we can return to our business as usual position of seeking to fix problems and improve the quality of life for Eastleigh residents. Our vision is one of a place with hope at the centre, a borough that will truly address our climate emergency with renewables, with sustainable transport and energy, helping tackle fuel poverty a borough that will truly promote our public health, our mental health, and improve quality of life genuinely from cradle to grave. A borough that will work with business to create the wealth to protect our environment and to improve our infrastructure. A borough that will support volunteers, our culture, our, our arts. A borough that will work to see the end of food banks. A borough of hope and a vision 
for our future. Much of this, Mr Mayor, won't be easy. Nothing that truly matters ever is. There are always hard cho choices. There are always difficult decisions, but there can be hope. Hope for a better future after a decade of austerity, after a year of lockdowns and the pandemic. That's the continued commitment of this Liberal Democrat administration. Proud this evening once again to protect services and to promote an ambitious programme of housing and investment and doing so while cutting council tax again. Mr Mayor, let's keep hope alive for Eastleigh and move this budget and the recommendations from Cabinet. Thank you. You've had a second of them. Yeah. Council budgets. Can you just confirm Council budget or seconded this, please? All right. Councillor Bicknell seconded this, didn't he? That is correct, Mr Mayor, and I also reserve my right as well. Thank you. All right. Can I invite lead speaker from the independent group, please? Thank you, Mr Mayor, um, and I'd like to thank the leader for um, his words regarding our enhancements that the independent group had proposed. Um, firstly, it is a really, really challenging time. We're fully aware of that. Um, we are most certainly so impressed with all our staff who are working under a huge and worrying time and they have really risen to that challenge. We, we want to thank everybody also that have helped the independent group in putting forward our amendments. Um, we've listened to what the leader has had to say and as you can imagine, we are so, so keen to ensure that these happen, particularly the digital exclusion that our older residents are experiencing. Having worked with Josh and with Adam and Jin and others from the um, lo local response centre and Eastleigh Community Aid, we've seen firsthand the impact that digital exclusion has on our residents. It's rapidly been accelerated because of COVID. They are missing out on so much and often they have the capability, they just don't have the confidence. So I will take your absolute assurance that these these aspects that we've promoted, the, the desire to improve our environmental um, well-being to improve the opportunities for older people and I would like to thank the leader for the opportunity for us to work together with you to ensure that these get get brought forward during this year and with that in mind the um, independent group have decided we will on this occasion remove our amendments so thank you leader and um, I hope that you will work with us um, to make sure that some of these aspirations, which I'm sure your group share just as much, come to fruition. Um, thank you. Um, the, the leader would like a quick reply. The leader would like a reply. Oh, Mr. Mayor, can I just thank you? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Can I just thank Councillor uh, Parker Jones uh, for her commentary? We'll work together on this stuff because it's something we all agree with, and uh, we can do that much more much more effectively collaboratively uh, without an amendment. So thank you very much. Thank Great. you. I invite lead speaker from the Conservative group now, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, good evening. I wanted to start by expressing my thanks to all the officers and staff of Eastleigh Borough Council for the immense work they put into keeping the services of the borough operating during a year of extreme difficulties, a year which has seen our normal working practices overturned and replaced with new ways of working, some of which I'm sure will be adopted as standard in the future. Coronavirus has affected us all, some more seriously than others, and this will reflect on our planning for the future, not only for our, in our personal lives, but in the way we socialise both at work and at play. Staff at Eastleigh Borough Council have had to adapt to working from home as well as new technology, in particular cutting meetings using Zoom or Teams, and even members have learnt to use this technology to fulfil their council duties. We have yet to know what the long-term financial effects of the Covid lockdowns will be, so planning for the future is particularly difficult this year as there are so many uncertainties. As lockdown restrictions ease and the economy picks up, will businesses be able to return to pre-lockdown profitability? How long will it take? Will employees be able to return from furlough to their old jobs? How will the council's property portfolio perform? Bearing in mind it has significant interest in the lever industry 
and especially in the point in the Berry theatres. What about the council's other income streams, especially parking fees, which have shown significant losses as a result of lockdown? Will the provisions made in this budget be adequate? With so much uncertainty, the 2021 budget should not be a year to take unnecessary risks with residents' money, nor with the council's finances. It should be a year of prudence and consolidation to ensure that it has enough income for the necessary services provided by council to be properly maintained. Fortunately, during 2021, much of council's revenue loss has been covered by 3.5 million of government grants and a further 3.6 million from the change of use of new homes bonus monies received by the council. Although some of that, I believe, has been attributed to reserves, but the papers are not clear on that point. Without this additional support, we would have been looking at an overspend by Council to 31 December 2021 of around 7 million. The above figures demonstrate how volatile our revenue account is and how difficult it is to budget for the unknowns that COVID lockdown have created. I want to thank Sarah King, Andy Smith and all their team for their hard work in preparing this budget, which does balance which is no mean feat in times of such financial uncertainty. But I do question why this administration is sending out the message that all is well, business as usual, so much so that they are proposing to reduce council tax this year by 0.4%. Particularly when 0.4% equates to only 51 pence per annum for each household in the borough. This reduction won't even buy one resident a cup of coffee. What this reduction does do, however, is reduce the income to council by £24,843. This pot of money could be used by council for the benefit of residents to help prevent Street Stream having to divert staff to assist waste and recycling colleagues with their rounds leaving core duties undone. Gutters are left full of leaves with the inevitable effect of flooding and block drains when the rains arrive before the sweepers. This is happening around the borough. I am therefore proposing that council tax precept is left at its current level of £129.91 pence, a 0% increase, and the additional income received by council of the £24,000 odd mentioned is used to support the drive for waste collection operations, enabling more environmentally practices to be adopted. At this point, I think it is worth repeating to members the points raised by our external auditors in their audit report dated 25th November 2020, as some may have missed it at the time. Material uncertainty relating to going concern. We draw attention to note 1.01 in the financial statements, which describes the extent and duration of current income losses, the council's ability to refinance debt, the cost of replacement borrowing and the council's ability to borrow further should there be the need to do so. As stated in note 1.01, .01, this indicates that a material uncertainty exists that may cast significant doubt on the council's ability to continue providing the current level of services with an, out an increase in planned income. Publication of the borough's accounts and the full auditor's report are on the EBC's website. So I question at a time when our own auditors are raising concerns about council being able to continue to provide current level of services with an out and increase in planned income, that this administration is planning to cut the precept it sets and reduce the amount of money it can spend per capita in our borough. This administration is not listening to its own auditors as it prepares to gamble with the health, financial health of our borough. Some may have noticed that although the plan is to reduce the precept by 0.4%, the actual amount of money the council will collect in total from council taxes will increase. Smoke and mirrors accounting? Not quite. It's all due to increased building across the borough which increases the number of households contributing to the pot. In other words, the more building that goes on in the borough, the more the council collects from its council tax income as there are more households contributing, less is spent on services per capita, the level of services decline across the borough. An interesting 
set of circumstances. And that is why I'm proposing that the average band E remains at 129.91 pence. This will be a 0% increase on preset for the year, but would help council to maintain its services to residents. Since being appointed to Audit and Resources Committee, I have become increasingly concerned about the ongoing reports from our internal auditors about the weakness in controls, lack of compliance against controls, and lack of action taken to implement recommendations made by the internal auditors on a timely basis. These reports arise as many systems checked across the borough's operations. This has to change. Processes are set up for a purpose, to prevent fraud and error and to ensure the operations of the borough are streamlined to avoid waste and also to ensure taxpayers receive proper value for money that they pay to council. These warnings have been given by our internal audit team and it is time they were listened to and action taken. Therefore, I am proposing that additional resources are provided within our internal audit resource to enable them to carry out in-depth review of process across the council's operations and make recommendations for improvement. This would require additional funding of £100,000. I propose that this funding is taken from the new homes bonus monies as this is a fundamental requirement needed across the whole of Council and particularly for the monitoring of the many housing projects that Council is undertaking. This is particularly relevant to the One Horton Heath project, which is costing millions, that Council has decided to project manage itself and therefore should be subject to even more scrutiny, including that from external sources. In summary, I do not consider that now is the time in a time of such uncertainty over the future of the economy and consequently the future income of council, it is the time to be reducing council income streams. Further, we need to spend time and money reviewing our internal processes to ensure our structures are sound so that we're able to obtain best value for our residents whilst improving the environment and meeting our climate change targets. Therefore, I move recommendations to council as follows. The £100,000 is allocated from the new homes bonus monies to enable officers to create an internal team to support the ongoing improvement of process controls and compliance at Council. That Council maintains East Borough's Council tax preset at its current level of £129.91, which would increase Council's tax income by £24,843 to be used to support the drive for waste collection operations to be streamlined, enabling more inventory friendly practices to be adopted. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I so move. Is there a second for that? Is there a seconder for these uh, amendments? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm more than happy to uh, uh, second this and reserve my rights. Councillor Dean. Yeah. Councillor Dean seconds. Yeah. Any other amendments? Right. Can we move on to a single debate on the proposals and amendments? And you can only speak once. Is there any council wishing to speak? I'm quiet. I think that's no, Mr. Mayor. I don't believe there is going to be any debate. No, I believe no. There, there's no debate. And um, so, in effect, the uh, it's it's now the conclusion of that. And the only person who can speak again on, on, on the amendments is Councillor Atkinson, because she's moved to second that amendment. All right. Can I just, just uh, nobody's back? Yeah, okay, Councillor Curl wishes to speak. Yeah, okay, Councillor Curl. Oh, Councillor Curl's asked to speak first. All right. Councillor Curl. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to um, just uh, just to. Just a comment, really. I think on on the Conservative group's uh, amendments. Certainly, the second one, uh, which is looking to um, 
uh, maintain, shall we say, the precept income to the council by not supporting a reduction, however small that is, um, to the, the taxpayers of the of the borough, um, and that that money then should be used um, to improve, shall we say, um, the waste services across the borough. Um, that's exactly what we have done already. Um, there is a new, we have undertaken a complete waste services review across the borough, uh, which have been balancing up rounds. It's going to go live on the 1st of March. It's, it's in my cabinet statement, as you'll probably have already seen, Mr. Mayor. Um, and that's exactly what we have done to drive efficiencies in, to make them more environmentally friendly, to improve the services to residents, to improve our recycling by improving uh, glass collections to be fortnightly and waste collections for the first time uh, to flats. Um, so that residents who live in sheltered accommodation and flatted accommodation will be able to, um, uh, shall we say, enjoy the same services that the rest of um, the residents in the borough have done for many years. So I find it rather strange that we're having this um, proposed amendment to our budget to do something which we have, and I say we, uh, and I will pay tribute in effect to all the staff who have worked incredibly hard to bring this together. Um, to undertake in a very, very difficult set of circumstances, a full waste review of the borough to level up our, um, our, our collection rounds, to make them more manageable for the crews, more efficient. Um, and, um, and yes, this will be going live on the 1st of March. So the second amendment is, is totally unnecessary in my view. Um, so I, I, I find that very strange that it's being proposed, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wants to speak? Yeah. Councillor Gomer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to touch on a couple of points. Um, like Councillor House uh, said earlier, I wanted to uh, welcome the attention uh, to digital inclusion and transport planning uh, that the independent groups now withdrawn amendment brought. Um, and to put on record to Council that assuming I continue as Chair next year, I'm looking forward to picking up both those issues uh, through the Policy and Performance Scrutiny Panel's work plan, um, as in fact we've already started uh, via our engagement with the forthcoming Equality Strategy, which I suspect Councillor Campbell uh, may mention shortly. Um, I can't support the Conservative Group's amendment to maintain the current precept, though council tax is, as I think we should all know, a regressive tax that hits the poorest the hardest. It is simply unfair, a profound social injustice, in fact, and I'm proud that this council is committed to reducing year on year on year the burden that it places on our residents. And the report, in fact, notes that our precept would be 30 percent higher had we followed inflation. Those small cuts really add up for our residents. I appreciate that this is a time of significant uncertainty, as noted by the external auditors, but frankly, rather a slight uncertainty over our ability to maintain current high level of service than the material certainty of more cuts and more regressive taxation that the Conservatives at Hampshire keep delivering. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Right, Councillor Campbell, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to respond to the um, independence um, items around digital exclusion, and I want to thank them for highlighting um, this really important topic. Digital exclusion is undoubtedly an issue which needs to be combated, and this has been made plain during the pandemic. Um, it isn't just older people that are affected, it's people in lower income groups, the unemployed, people with disabilities, people with fewer educational uh, qualifications, the young who were homeschooled, um, homelessness, uh, people suffering with homelessness, and those whose first language is not English, which is why it's a feature in the new draft equality strategy, which is currently out for consultation. But it is a complex and multifaceted problem which covers everything from the lack of hardware to accessibility issues to IT skills to, as the independents um, do reference to, confidence. But it can often be used to mask other problems such as poor literacy skills and social issues such as loneliness and domestic abuse. And of course, it comes with all sorts of safeguarding issues. It's important also that the council doesn't step into the space that is rightly occupied by friends and family, neighbours 
and the wider community because they can provide the ongoing support over a long period of time. At the moment, the Eastleigh Welfare Agencies Partnership, which operates in a similar way to the Health and Wellbeing Board, is looking at digital exclusion as part of its work with welfare agencies from across the borough to create an action plan to improve communications, increase partnership working and improve access to the benefit system. The action plan will be a partnership response to address the key priorities once the mapping exercise is complete and we know what is currently available in the community and we understand where the actual greatest need is and who is best placed to provide it. It's only at that point, once we are clear on the priorities, that then we will apply the appropriate funding. Additionally, Camilla Sharp and Chris Payne have recently taken on two employment and skills specialists and part of their remit is to increase the social value in the One Horton Heath project and help with the economic recovery of the borough. They'll be meeting with Eastley College to discuss the next steps in the digital inclusion programme shortly. We also have the externally funded pontoon project, which is upskilling women's IT skills. So I feel that we have already in motion a lot of activity that will tackle digital exclusion. And I think it's really important that we continue with our existing partnership approach and enable it to come to fruition so that we can make the greatest impact over the longer period, longest period of time. So I hope that does give the independence confidence that this is an issue that we are addressing and will continue to do so. And I'm very happy for them to engage in, in the activities. Thank you. Councillor Riley, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And I am too going to speak on the independent group's um, <coughs> proposals that uh, they put forward. And first of all, thank them and the Conservative group for putting forward pro proposals this evening to Council. It's always good to see the opposition groups putting things forward and giving us the opportunity to discuss them. So <coughs> I, I certainly welcome the. I'm only going to speak on item two of the independent group's um, proposals and I welcome them putting this forward and I thought to, to in my first read of it I thought oh good this sounds really excellent um, highly supportable but when I started to think about it a little bit further I've, I found that there were a, a few buts and it is those buts I wanted to point out. Firstly um, <coughs> if 20,000 doesn't get us a lot bought from consultants if we have to use consultants to do some of the survey and consultation work um, <clears throat> to undertake it will probably cost at least twice and if not a bit more than that and so um, we would have to think about whether we can do that we've got the capacity in-house to do it and I think probably we haven't just at this moment of time with Covid going on because I know our sustainable transport office has been doing an enormous amount of work to do on that over the past few months. Um, post Covid of course and hopefully that we're getting that near button by now Many of the services, public transport services, will be wanting to see get back towards as far as possible normality um, as from beforehand. And that may in fact require us to top up some of the um, funding that we provide for the services that we do already um, in those months, certainly for a temporary period. So to sort of kick start them off the ground again until they're able to stand better on their own two feet. And so I, I was wanting to see that we've got some money in reserve to be able to do that. Next, the fact that the County Council are going to um, uh, <clears throat> consult on their local transport plan. We had a discussion uh, at um, Cabinet the other night as whether it's a, that was a pre-consultation consultation or the consultation. They understand the consultation proper is coming out in the summer and uh, we will want obviously to work with the County Council as the Highway Authority um, on whatever proposals they come forward um, from their uh, local transport plan and I think that's very important. 
I totally agree with the independent uh, members that improved access to public transport supports our climate change emergency policies, as well as supporting health, well-being, personal independence and equality. And in order to support these excellent aims and objectives, our sustainable transport officer is in the process of writing walking and cycling strategies for the borough and will be starting an overall sustainable transport strategy just at some period during this year, which will address most of the key issues that uh, the motion that the independent members put forward uh, will cover. Finally, Mr Mayor, we will also be wanting to see what our um, bus operators and so on, the plans they've got forward to reshape their networks and so on after the um, COVID um, epidemic. I've had some initial discussions with two of them and I know that one is planning to fill one of the gaps that there is in the service That's in, at the present time. I can't say more about that, either where it is or any details because the services aren't registered yet um, or just on their way to being registered, but we will let you know as soon as we can. So whilst I can't, you know, we've, we've seen the um, independents withdraw their with motion this evening, I have to say I'd be very pleased to work with them over the coming months to try and achieve some of their aims and objectives in, term, in terms of improving access to um, public transport. And I thank them once again for putting forward the motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Holtz, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, first of all, I, I'd echo what people have said about the independent uh, group's amendments tonight. I think that they should be commended in their attitude and the way that they are prepared to work with the, uh, the leading group on some of the issues that are clearly very important to them. So thank you for that. A very sensible way to, to, to deal with the um, uh, amendments. Um, I really wanted to talk on the amendments by uh, Councillor Atkinson because I find it rather strange. Um, Councillor Atkinson is actually part of the Audit and Resources Scrutiny Committee and she has ample time in those committees to uh, address the issues that she's raised. So I'm very disappointed that she's chosen tonight to uh, uh, raise them. Um, but I would like to give members a little bit of uh, reassurance that the Audit and Resources Committee are dedicated to uh, supporting the internal audit um, team and work diligently with the outside auditors to ensure that we are all above board and uh, working well. Um, Really, that's all I can say is that uh, we have regular meetings, the head of audit and myself, to discuss matters like staff provision and and uh, workload. So uh, we will continue to have those meetings and bring issues to the committee like we've done in the past so that members of the committee can then consider whether they want to make recommendations for extra support uh, to cabinet. That is the way we do it. We don't put in a provision without for funding without uh, going through the process first. It would be rather dangerous, I think, to uh, suddenly agree uh, a figure. Um, in a meeting where we ha ha haven't even got the uh, uh, printed version of the recommendation. So uh, clearly um, it cannot be supported in my view um, and I should be supporting the main proposal. Thank you. Councillor Pretty, please. Thank, am I live, Mr. Mayor? Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just like to echo the sentiments that uh, Councillor Campbell has, has expressed. Um, 
appreciate the uh, motion from the independents regarding uh, digital in inclusion. Um, it's something the economics team has been very keen and keenly aware of over the last few months that uh, um, since the uh, lockdown last year, the those hardest hit are those of the younger age groups, the youth, the younger people that made are redundant from shop closures and so on and so forth. And we're looking at uh, ways that we can create training schemes to provide them with the opportunity to find their way back into the community and make, give them meaning in life. And I think it would be very nice if we could work with the independents and um, Councillor Camp to uh, achieve this goal. I think that it can't just be health and well-being or e the economy. It has to be a combination of us and uh, I look forward to being able to work with them if that, if they're willing to do that. Thank you. That's all I really had to say. Councillor Tidiris, please. Thank you. Um, I'd first like to start by um, thanking Ray, actually. Um, as we, we may have noticed in the at the beginning of the meeting, um, the uh, Margaret was it, Councillor Atkinson was in the position of proposing the motion without possibly having a sec seconder from our own group, um, given that Judith has, has sent an apologies today. Um, I think it's really nice that Ray has given the opportunity to make sure that the proposal from the Conservative group still gets heard and still gets debated properly. And it's a really important part of um, working through the, this budget effectively is to um, listen to challenges and um, take them seriously. And I, I think Ray's done a great job at making sure that that can happen tonight. I'd also like to reassure David Airy, Councillor Airy, um, that the numbers within our enhancement, um, our, our proposed amendment, which we have subsequently withdrawn, um, that the numbers did come from officers. Um, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a specific project on public transport that we proposed, which is really to look at how many people within the borough are living within um, good, easy distance of a bus stop, and more importantly, who isn't. Um, and understanding really the scope of how things are spread out. We certainly don't believe that £20,000 would fix the access to the public transport within the borough, but we certainly think it would help to shape um, the ideas that shape the um, assessment of how big the problem is. Um, I'd also like to thank um, the Liberal Democrat group for um, supporting the um, ideas that we put forward in terms of um, wanting to address dig digital inclusion. Absolutely right, it does it does affect people beyond the elderly, um, but it's there's been a lot of discussion in um, the press, etc., about um, access for young people for their schoolwork, etc., which is really, really important. And we're not saying that isn't important. We just want to make sure that the older people um, who find that who found themselves in the case of this pandemic unable to find out information, or in some cases unable to make a doctor's appointment without having access to the internet, weren't forgotten as part of that. And we really appreciate that support. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> All right. Is there anybody else who wants to speak? No, Mr. Mayor, no. to sum up on Can the, I ask Councillor Atkinson to sum up? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Stop. Councillor, Councillor Bicknell has just got in under the wire, uh, Mr. Mayor. So allow Councillor Bicknell to speak. Okay? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, th th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry for the confusion, but um, <laughs> there's a delay sometimes when you press the enter key. I, I heard it go, go go ping on your computer. Um, yes, I mean I. I'm, I just want to um, to echo a lot of the thoughts that um, other people have said, in particular Councillor Airy and Councillor Campbell, with reassuring the independent group that their points will actually be taken up and, and, and taken through council, um, and um, and that. Um, and, and and once again, we have a, a budget proposal from the independent group, which is you know been quite a regular thing over the years. Um, but surprising, for the first time in a number of years, we've actually got an, a, an official amendment, I think, from the, from the Conservative group to, um, to be able to discuss, sorry, from Councillor Atkinson um, to be able to discuss, um, which I find sort of quite intriguing um, at the end of the day. Um, yeah, Councillor House, uh, through his budget speech, is, is given a message of hope and, um, um, and growth and, and then the Tories come back and question why everything has to be so rosy. Um, 
I mean, things are sort of quite glum enough at the moment and what have you. Um, and then we have a, a Conservative amendment that wants to increase council tax, increase funding um, and not actually give a message of security, stability um, and um, hope to our residents, um, which, you know, in, in this time, um, I find it very disappointing um, um, at the end of the day. Um, Councillor Atkinson goes on about um, um, the, uh, um, you know, we need to be, it needs to be a, a prudent year. Um, well, she actually needs to um, have a look at um, some of the other stats in, in the actual budget where it comes to being prudent and, and making sure that we can secure our, um, our income and our revenue um, and perhaps have a look at the actual um, business case that the borough uses on its prudential borrowing um, and the reserves that the council's got um, to protect it from things such as this. Um, and you know just for the record for those that don't have all the details and what have you if i can find my piece of paper i think the council has in excess of 20 million pounds in reserves to protect us from things such as this from income from voids from our property um our property portfolio and such like through potential business um, um practices whereas you know, we cover our interests, we cover our maintenance, we cover our voids, and we still make a surplus profit, a net profit of twelve million pounds a year, um, and um, and that. So I think that you know that in itself ought to be hope and, and security for our residents in the fact that we actually do this and been doing it very successfully for a number of years now. Um, protecting services, you know, you know the talk about having to reduce services, um, and that. Perhaps she's been listening a little bit too much to Hampshire County Council. Now, I wasn't there today um, and I haven't seen anything about it, but my guess is that the county process was perhaps not quite so rosy as ours and it was all doom and gloom and how government has cut money um, to, to, to local authorities and how they can't afford X, Y and Z um, and they're forced to make you know, reductions in services and would have to put up your council tax um, just so that we can then target what we've got better and help people. Um, but we will respond to government and ask for extra funding. Um, and then we repeat it next year, the year after, the year after and the year after, um, because that's what they've done in the year previous, the year previous and the year previous. Um, so I, I cannot support the, the amendment in any way, shape or form from the Conservative group um, because you know, I can't support in this time, uh, you know, a, a, uh, an even more regressive budget, as Councillor Goma has already said, it hits the poorest the hardest. I cannot agree to an increase in council tax, um, and I certainly don't recognise um, the uh, the doom and gloom that the um, Conservative group are actually um, you know, trying to spread. Um, it should be a time, as Councillor House has, um, House has said, you know, a time of hope, a time of security, and. Um, you know, reassurance to our residents that we are on their side um, at the end of the day. Um, we're on we're on your side. We want to give you hope. We will do this. We will do that and we will do it and we will give something back. I we will reduce council tax. Um, so that's all I've got to say. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so thank you very much. All right, we go back to Councillor Atkinson now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, First of all, I would like to give my thanks to the independent group, in particular Councillor Dean, for allowing a debate on these matters. And for the record, um, regarding the recommendations that the independent group were putting forward, I did support them and do support them. Um, and would just comment that in particular regarding the digital um, skills for the elderly, I would probably not want to restrict that just to support the elderly, as I think all of us require support on IT matters from time to time. So welcome that that will be reviewed. Regarding comments that have been made, first of all, I think I made it very clear. I am not proposing an increase in council tax. I am in proposing a 0% change in council tax. It is not an increase. I think I also made it clear that what is being proposed by this administration is a reduction of 51 pence per person per annum. Quite frankly, it doesn't even buy a cup of coffee 
and to consider that that is something that is extraordinary. It is not. It's a very mediocre uh, reduction. Um, if we're, well, in fact, it's worse than mediocre. I think it's a negligible reduction and nobody will actually see it. It's, it's a, a gamble on words uh, from, from this administration. The point I'm also making is that it is very clear that we are moving resources from one part of the council to another to support work. And what has concerned me and why I have phrased the motion in the way that I have, that on waste collection, yes, I totally accept we are rolling out a new way of doing it. And it takes resources to do that. Those resources have not been provided in full. They have been taken from other resources within council and therefore core work has not been done. And I can show anybody from any council that wishes to see, there are significant areas within my own area, which is Hilton Green Chambers Ford, where gutters are not cleaned and haven't been cleaned since the autumn because um, there has not been the staff there and the resource to do it. We have to cover this. It is not acceptable practice that our core services are not performed because we're rolling out something new. With regard to the resources that are required um, in terms of internal audit, I have put it under the internal audit umbrella. But what I am thinking is along the lines that we need almost a troubleshooting team across the borough for all operations to resolve things when there are pinch points within those operating umbrellas where they haven't got enough of their own resources to be able to deal with issues which particularly uh, surround processes and weaknesses and compliance with processes. It is not acceptable, Mr Mayor, I suggest, that there are matters outstanding in this area for over three years which should have been resolved within three months. And that is purely and simply because there's not enough resource. Regarding the message that I'm not full of hope, I'm not saying I am not full of hope. What I am saying is this is a year of uncertainty. That is, it has to be the case. None of us knows what the outcomes of COVID are going to be. I am giving a message of caution. Let's just be careful. There are many risks that are uh, uh, around that are likely to come to fruition as COVID lockdown eases. And yes, I have had a look at the figures and I have actually given quite a um, considerable look at some of the budget figures. And I think it's interesting to note that had this administration chosen to calculate the precept, in the same way that it did last year, actually the precept will come out as being £132.95, pence, an increase of 3.04%. And I can certainly show any member of council the figures and how those calculations were achieved. And in the budget book itself, it would be useful if people did actually look at it and check it because there's at least one arithmetical error there and I don't have time to check the rest of it. So I think Yes, I, of course, I look at the figures, but more importantly, I'm listening to our auditors and they have too given a risk of uncertainty. And it is that You've that got we 30 need seconds to put into Sorry, sorry, Mr. Mayor. You've got 30 seconds left. I finished anyway, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. And that is all I wish to say in response. Thank you. Thank you. The leader of the council, can you? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. And just just for the record, because it may, may actually quite surprise some some councillors, um, particularly those who haven't been a member of the council for that long. Uh, it is the administration's policy that if a if a minority group uh, hasn't got someone available to second their motion, we will second it to unable debate. And uh, Ray, Ray Dean just happened to get to his mouse before I got to my mouse. Uh, but thank you, Ray, for doing that. But we would have done the same thing to enable Margaret uh, Atkinson's um, 
amendment to be uh, debated this evening because that's what democracy is all about. Um, and uh, we had this many years ago when the Labour group shrunk to a small size uh, and we, as a matter of policy, uh, always seconded their motions to uh, enable debate. Uh, I, I was rather worried by Councillor Atkinson's amendment in, in many ways, uh, Mr Mayor, and I'll tell you why. Firstly, we have, as, as a matter of course over the years, taken a view that uh, we will accept that because we are a growing borough and therefore we do achieve higher levels of council tax income each year for the same level of council tax. We have managed to make sure by using efficiency savings, we could deliver the same level of service uh, from a reduced council tax income per, per property. So Council Atkinson's assumption is, is basically flawed up front in terms of the concept that we were spreading the jam too thinly. We still have one chief executive. We don't need an extra chief executive because housing growth grows by uh, 1%. We don't have extra councillors. We don't have extra this, that and the other. We manage to maintain through uh, marginal costings, levels of service at high levels. Councillor Atkinson always talks about borrowing. She talks about it as debt, of course, because that's the conservative way of characterising these things. We talk about investment because that's what it is. It's exactly the same way as a young family uh, go to a building society or a bank uh, when they want to set up their first home. It's exactly the same way that an entrepreneur uh, starting out on a business will go to the bank to borrow, to invest for the future, to create growth, to create wealth, uh, to create prosperity and hope for the future. And that is exactly the approach that this council has taken, but it's done so incredibly prudently over the years. Councillor Holes talked about uh, some of our reserves. That's exactly right. Uh, we have reserves to make sure that we are financially secure and we can maintain our position over many years. We've done that and we'll continue to do so. The net effect is we're able to protect services, to protect things for our vulnerable residents in a way that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do uh, if we took a different approach. So Councillor Atkinson suggested another £24,000 in the budget. It's kind of a bit immaterial uh, given the scale of the budget. The real issue is, as Councillor Goma says, if you make incremental changes uh, to council tax, eventually it hit home and it actually does cost residents more over time and council tax is a regressive tax. But more worrying is Council Atkinson's proposal to use new homes bonus on revenue spend. Uh, we have never done that and it has got a lot of councils into a real financial mess. You might ask why? Well it's because new homes bonus is one-off income. You get it as a capital lump sum, it just comes once. It's not repeated year after year after year, so you can't use it to plan regular ongoing expenditure. So if you put £100,000 into the budget from a capital sum, you need to find a new way of funding it next year. Where's that going to come from? It can only come from two places, either by cutting other services or by putting an extra 2% on council tax. So it's not sustainable, and it's actually rather dangerous. And what's more, we have a continuous improvement team being put in as part of our recent restructure. So that picks up the issue about performance, which matters to all of us. And we're all very keen to make sure that council performance continues to improve on core services that matter to our residents. So we won't support the Conservative amendment to this budget this evening, Mr Mayor, and we won't support it for the right reasons not just because it's been proposed by the Conservatives, although it's kind of counterintuitive to find uh, a Conservative uh, uh, amendment to a budget suggesting a higher level of council tax from the opposition benches uh, than a proposal from the administration. But there we are, it's a strange world. Mr Mayor, I'll turn to uh, the independent group and I think it was very helpful for Councillor Airy and for Councillor Campbell to explain some of the issues that we just had around the detail uh, of the independent group proposals. Um, as we said earlier, we really do want to work on these collaboratively. It's far better if we can work across the aisle uh, in political speak uh, with opposition groups because we're all elected equally to do a job for our residents and we'd much rather work in a collaborative, constructive way uh, than simply throwing sticks and stones at each other. It really doesn't help. And, and while I'm speaking and without making this too much of a loving, can I put on record my thanks uh, and the council's thanks to Councillor Louise Parker-Jones for all the effort that she's put into helping with recruitment over the last few months. We've spent many, many hours together on teams with other councillors, uh, sorting out senior staff appointments. And I'd like to, again, just put on record uh, my thanks to her uh, for so doing. Mr Mayor, we are in difficult times. We have had an incredibly challenging 12 months 
and we're not out of the woods yet. There's a long way to go, but it is really, really important that we plan positively for the future. That we think about how, can, how we can uplift our community to tackle some of those challenges, to give them reassurance, to give them security, to give them a feeling of hope for the future, because it has been incredibly difficult. Whether we've been locked at home on teams, whether we've been out on the front line uh, doing a difficult job, whether we've been in a business that's been threatened for its survival, no one, no one has come through unscathed uh, in the last year, and it's important we put that on record. Our job as councillors, our job as a local authority, as a council, is to be community leaders, is to give hope to our community, to say things can be better. We can play our part this evening by agreeing these recommendations, agreeing this budget, give hope to our community, keep council tax down, protect services, deliver infrastructure first, and let's get to a greener, cleaner Eastleigh in the future, which is also still prosperous and puts people's health first. Mr Mayor, I hope colleagues will reject the Conservative Amendment and support the budget. Thank you. All right, now we move on to the voting on Conservative Amendments. Can I hand over to Laura Johnston, please? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Airy? Against. Councillor Allingham? Against. Councillor Asman? Against. Councillor Atkinson? For. Councillor Bearder? Against. Councillor Bicknell? Against. Councillor Bourne? Against. Councillor Broadhurst? Against. Councillor Campbell? Against. Councillor Clark? Against. Councillor Corbyn? Against. Councillor Cauldry? Against. Councillor Craig? Against. Councillor Cross? Against. Councillor Dean? For. Councillor Duguid? Against. Councillor Garton? Against. Councillor Goma? Against. Councillor Groves? Against. Councillor Holes? Against. Councillor House? Against. Councillor Irish? Against. Councillor Jed? Against. Councillor Curl? Against. Yourself, Mr Mayor? Against. Councillor Manning? Against. Councillor Marsh? Against. Councillor Parker-Jones? Against. Councillor Pragnall? Against. Councillor Pretty? Against. Councillor Rich? Against. Councillor Tennant? Against. Councillor Tidridge? Against. Councillor Trace? Against. Councillor Tyson Payne? Against. The amendment is clearly lost, Mr Mayor. Right, now we move on to the substantive mo motion put by the leader. Councillor Airy? For. Councillor Allingham? For. Councillor Asman? For. Councillor Atkinson? Against. Councillor Bearder? For. Councillor Bicknell? For. Councillor Bourne? For. Councillor Broadhurst? For. Councillor Campbell? For. Councillor Clark? For. Councillor Corbyn? For. Councillor Cauldry? For. Councillor Craig? For. Councillor Cross? For. Councillor Dean? Abstain. Councillor Duguid? For. Councillor Garton? For. Councillor Goma? For. Councillor Groves? For. Councillor Holes? For. Councillor House? For. Councillor Irish? For. Councillor Jed? For. Councillor Curl? For. Yourself, Mr Mayor? For. Councillor Manning? For. Councillor Marsh? For. Councillor Parker Jones? For. Councillor Pregnell? For. Councillor Pretty? For. Councillor Rich? For. Councillor Tennant? For. Councillor Tidridge? For. Councillor Trace? For. Councillor Tyson Payne? For. The amendment is, oh, sorry, the amendment, the, the uh, vote is clearly won, Mr Mayor. Item nine. Next on the agenda is the council tax resolution. 2021-22 report. May I have a mover, please? Mr. May I move the resolution uh, re resolutions as circulated? Thank you. Is the motion seconded? 
Uh, happy to second. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any debate? I'll pass it on to Laura Johnston for recorded vote. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Airy? Oh. Councillor Allingham? Oh. Councillor Asman? Oh. Councillor Atkinson? Against. Councillor Bearder? Councillor Bearder? Yeah. Four, is that four, Councillor Bearder? Four, yeah. Councillor Bicknell? Uh, four. Councillor Bourne? Four. Councillor Broadhurst? Four. Councillor Campbell? Four. Councillor Clark? Four. Councillor Corbyn? Four. Councillor Cauldry? Four. Councillor Craig? Four. Councillor Cross? Four. Councillor Dean? Against. Councillor Duguid? Four. Councillor Garton? Four. Councillor Goma? Four. Councillor Groves? Four. Councillor Holes? Four. Councillor House? Four. Councillor Irish? Four. Councillor Jerd? Four. Councillor Curl? Four. Yourself, Mr Mayor? Four. Councillor Manning? Four. Councillor Marsh? Four. Councillor Parker-Jones? Four. Councillor Pregnell? Four. Councillor Pretty? Four. Councillor Rich? Four. Councillor Tennant? Four. Councillor Tidridge? Four. Councillor Trace? Four. Councillor Tyson Payne? Four. That's clearly carried, Mr Mayor. All right, item 10. We now have the Capital Investment and Tragedy Management Strategy. May I have a mover, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll happily move the recommendations that were circulated, all eight of them in one go. I'm happy to take any debate, but have nothing to add at this stage. Thank you. The motion seconded. Yes, thank you. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Happy to second. Thank you. Right. Any debate? I think that's no, Mr. Mayor. I'm seeing now move to the vote. Now we move to the vote. <laughs> All those in favour, can you unmute and signal your agreement? All those against? All those four. Agreed. Agreed. All those against? Any abstentions? I'm abstaining, Mr. Mayor. Number 11. Next, we have the Community Governments Governance re Review for the Unparished Area of Eastleigh Borough. May I have a mover, please? Mr. Mayor, I was hoping Councillor Clark would move, but if he's not available to, I'll happily move the recommendations that have been circulated that come from Administration Committee and also an additional set of recommendations that have been circulated by email today uh, as part of being efficient rather than having lots of extra meetings. Uh, informally, East Local Area Committee members and Administration Committee members have put forward warding proposals uh, for the two new local councils and uh, so we can kickstart that bit of the process uh, by agreeing these uh, proposals this evening and which have the support of the local members in East Local Area Committee. Thank you Mr Mayor. Is the motion seconded? Yes, I'm happy to second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. participation. Nobody's asked to speak. There's no public participation, so we move on to debate. That's a no, Mr. Mayor. No. So we move out to go to a recorded vote and Lord Johnson will carry out All right. the call. We'll go, go on to recorded vote. So then we'll move back to Laura Johnston to take the vote. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Airy? Four. Councillor Allingham? Four. Councillor Asman? Four. Councillor Atkinson? Abstaining. Councillor Bearder? Four. Councillor Bicknell? Four. Councillor Bourne? Four. Councillor Broadhurst? Four. Councillor Campbell? Four. Councillor Clark? Four. 
Councillor Corbyn. Four. Councillor Cauldry. Four. Councillor Craig. Four. Councillor Cross. Four. Councillor Dean. Four. Councillor Duguid. Four. Councillor Garton. Four. Councillor Goma. Four. Councillor Groves. Four. Councillor Hulls. Four. Councillor House. Four. Councillor Irish. Four. Councillor Jed. Four. Councillor Curl. Four. Councillor Mann. Four. Councillor Manning. Four. Councillor Marsh. <coughs> Four. Councillor Parker Jones. Four. Councillor Pregnell. Four. Councillor Pretty. Four. Councillor Rich. Four. Councillor Ra oh, apologies, Councillor Tennant. Four. Councillor Tidridge. Abstain. Councillor Trace. Four. Councillor Tyson Payne. Four. That's clearly carried, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Item 12. The next item is Cabinet Member Statements on Decent Issues pertinent to the Cabinet Portfolios. Councillors are reminded that they are entitled to a question and one supplementary on each statement. As we are being broadcast live this evening, we thought it helpful if each Cabinet Member who has tabled a statement is given about a minute to give an update in order in the order in which statements are set out in the agenda. So, Councillor Pretty, please, can you give your update? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I haven't got a lot to add to my statement. Um, the staff continue to work tirelessly to um, res res review and, uh, 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 sorry, <laughs> review and approve uh, discretionary grants which are um, desperately needed by a lot of businesses. I was going to touch on the Freeport um, submission, but Council House uh, made uh, a, a statement on that in, in the opening. I think it's a, an exciting prospect um, that joining with the rest of the Solent area in an application such as this, um, when we need to level up our society, we're, we are apparently are quite um, affluent down here, but I would disagree with that. I think um, we are an exception and we do need to see levelling up and more prosperity here. So apart from that, Mr Mayor, I've got nothing to add. Happy to take any questions. Any questions? I think that's... No. no, Mr Mayor. Councillor well, Carl, give your update, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, very much like uh, Councillor Pretty, I don't have a great deal to add. Uh, the Borough Council's tree nursery is uh, being set up and uh, is, is working well. Um, we uh, are looking to produce over 17,000 trees um, of a mixed variety, which you will have seen in the report um, in the first 12 months, which is really good news. Um, we are, as I alluded to earlier, obviously uh, investing in our waste and recycling services um, and this will be a new way of collecting, collecting our waste and many of our residents will have um, received a letter but um, uh, uh, informing them of what's going to happen. Potentially a lot of them will have different uh, waste collection days um, but it will enable us in effect to be able to increase our glass collections uh, to fortnightly. Um, as you all know, they are currently monthly um, and also um, our um, battery collection as well, which will obviously improve our recycling rates across the borough. And also, as I say, uh, very excitingly, we will actually be able to um, start to collect food waste from our flats as well across the borough, which is really great news for residents who are living in those sorts of accommodations. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, we're also going to be increasing wildflower planting across the borough, um, which is really good because obviously I do appreciate that uh, many residents thought that our previous schemes um, were, were not only um, fantastic uh, to look at, obviously great window wallop in effect, but also really good for our insects and wildlife too, which is obviously really good news. We want to encourage as much of that as possible. Um, and obviously we've um, held two Climate Champions um, online engagement events 
which was really good because obviously we had to pause our community engagement side of things um, uh, due to obviously the pandemic and not being able to meet in, uh, people in public etc so we decided to do some more online and um, we're hoping to have some more of those events which are really really great because it's obviously part of our climate um, uh, action plan to be able to engage with our residents um, on the climate and environment emergency um, and that's about it thank you very much any questions No, Mr. Mayor. No. All right. Next, Councillor Bicknell, can you give your update, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, on mine, there's not an awful much to update because um, we haven't built it yet. <laughs> It'll take a while. No. Um, and the only update really to actually give is it, it, it is the fact that obviously this is the the, the start of a process. Um, uh, it's been mentioned um, in Council House's um, statement about the budget, about hope and um, and moving forward and and um, and such like. Well, where it comes to the town centres, which again, obviously, Council House mentioned, um, town centres, the, the the process of um, retail shrinking has has actually been sped up. Um, by about 10 years um, in, in this last year um, and, and town centres are going to need to repurpose and become very much more um, a, a destination to socialise in and, and come to you know perhaps see your doctor, health hubs, dentists and, and that sort of thing um, and, that, and, and, and the post office is the start of a process um, with all town centres from now you know there will be a lag of probably a couple of years because of buildings being you know regenerated repurposed redesigned rebuilt um, uh, and what have you um, but to actually have this one with overwhelming support at, at planning um, to um, you know and being worked on at the moment as we speak by the by the project team um, it, it, it will be a sign um, fairly fairly soon I, I'd like to think that um, you know things are moving in the right direction um, um, so that's the only real update that I've got to, to, to give it's good it's positive um, very visual um, and, and happy to take any questions any questions no? lovely thank you very much Mr Mayor right next one's Councillor Aidy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I've got to, uh, nothing to add other than to say I strongly support the um, bid for the free port, which um, Councillor Pretty um, um, mentioned. I suppose all he said <coughs> said about that. I think it's a really, really uh, strong project, and hope that um, it's successful and meets government requirements as they <coughs> level up areas. Uh, which require that uh, leveling up, which are outside the Midlands and the North. And I think, think uh, <clears throat> a strong result on that would set a very good message for our area. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? No. Right. We move on to item 13. The next item is members questions. These can be found in your agenda packs. I will now invite Councillor Parker Jones to put her question to the leader. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so my question um, from the independent group was that we were deeply saddened to learn that the council had decided to lay off staff from the Point and the Berry theatres and the countryside um, services parks just prior to Christmas, um, rather than to extend the government's furlough scheme. The staff on zero hour contracts were the most vulnerable in respect to their employment status. Um, would you please let us know how many members of staff were affected what opportunities were offered to these staff for redeployment and how much will be the real cost to reappoint to these positions in the future? Thank you. Yes, thank, you. Hans, please. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr Mayor. And it may well be this is the point where uh, Councillor Parker Jones and I depart ways this evening. Um, I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding in, in Councillor Parker Jones' question. Uh, no staff have been laid off. Um, all 39 casuals 
who were previously available or are potentially still available in the future uh, to operate in the way that the arts and much of the leisure world uh, works in this area, which is through cash or shifts. Uh, with casual work, there's no obligation for the council to offer work, but equally there's no obligation on the casual worker to accept any offer of work. So they remain on the books uh, just as they were before lockdown uh, and thus there's no cost of new recruitment. What happened is that shifts that had been committed to were paid in full, uh, even if those shifts were never worked and were then paid at their average pay rate for an extended period, which was a pretty generous position from the council and above all fair, uh, both to those people uh, who have, have provided great service in the past and I'm sure will provide great service in the future. There is a, there is a big problem uh, with with many people across the country who, who work in the way that a lot of these art staff do, uh, which is they are almost like itinerant workers. They pick up bits of work when, when it works for them, often alongside other jobs. But of course, if the work stops, and then that does create a difficulty and that's the position that we were in but they weren't laid off um, and they are available for work as soon as opportunities become available again. Are there any supplementary questions? No thank you. Okay. All right we move on to Councillor Tedridge. Your question please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've got a question for Councillor Airy. Has any work taken place to model carbon emissions arising from changes in type and number of flights expected to result from the extension of Southampton Airport's runway if planning permission is granted? And if so, what results are expected by 2030 compared to 2019 when this council declared it's declared an environmental emergency? Can the council compare compare expected changes to the IPCC statement that aviation growth should be limited by 25% by 2050 in the UK. Has the council done any work to find out what the total increase in flights by 2030 will be nationally, given that Southampton Airport will be contributing increases towards that number? Thank you. So, Mr. Mayor, may I answer? Yep. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, we'll thank uh, Councillor Tidridge for the question, the long question, and she's going to get a long answer to go with it. Um, I, I, I thank, first of all, um, Craig Morrison who, um, from our planning department, who's done the research on this because it was quite a quite a lot of research required uh, to get an answer uh, this evening for her. Greenhouse gases are assessed in the chapter 13 of the environmental statement submitted with the Southampton Airport planning application. This assesses the greenhouse gas emissions using both the projected emissions of the existing aircraft without an extended runway and for those that are forecast to use the airport in the future should um, planning permission be granted. There will be a change in the fleet mix if uh, the planning um, application is approved and it will increase the number of narrow bodied uh, jets, including the Boeing 737-800, the Airbus A320 and 321, which are the favoured aircraft of the low cost carriers, which the airport seeks to attract. Forecasts are not provided for 2019, as the assessment is intended to demonstrate the future impacts of the development and not for 2030 as this year has not been modelled specifically. The years modelled are 2021 and 2036 which are consistent with other modelling within the environmental statement. Aircraft emissions within the environmental statement consists of takeoff and landing as well as climb, cruise and descent. This assesses the full impact of aircraft movement from departure from the terminal to the arrival at its destination airport. In 2021, without the proposed runway extension, the aircraft emissions amount to 319 kilotons of carbon dioxide equivalent. And with the extended runway, this is forecast to be 424 kilotons of carbon dioxide equivalent by 2036. Without the proposed development in 2036, aircraft emissions are expected to decrease to 28, sorry, 282 kilotons of carbon dioxide equivalent. 
should the proposed development be approved, the forecast for 2036 will be 753 kilotons carbon dioxide equivalent. For the purposes of clarity, I understand that the 25% of aviation passenger growth is advice issued by the UK Committee of Climate Change rather than the IPCC. This is advice issued to the government and could be amended prior to the government adopting the sixth carbon budget. It is important to note that this doesn't constitute government adopted policy at this moment in time, and this affects the weight that can be given to this in decision making process. In the UK Committee of Climate Change report on the sixth climate budget, it is advised that to meet the government's carbon targets and obligations, demand needs to be managed with a likely constraint being at 25% of the 2018 levels. This report suggests that this could be more or less constrained depending on future fuel efficiency and use of sustainable alternative fuels. Passenger data from Appendix 1.1 of the Environmental Statement Addendum showed that 1.8 million passengers used the airport in 2019. The noise and transport controls proposed for the development would limit the passenger numbers at the airport to 3 million per annum, representing a passenger increase of 67%. In terms of air traffic movements, I'm not aware of data predicting the number of air traffic movements nationally by 2030. The Department of Transport predicts the capacity of airports to, to be at a high level. The last forecast showed in 2016 the 30 largest airports on mainland UK, which includes Southampton, had a capacity for 1.8 million aircraft movements, with a forecast increase to 2 million by 2030. The DFT estimate capacity at Southampton is 150,000 air traffic movements per annum, both in 2016 and in 2030, and this is far, far in excess of the pre-COVID 22,904 air traffic movements at present without the proposed development and 36,737 with the proposed development. I'm sorry that's a long um, response to the question. I have, uh, hope I've answered all the points. I will send Jen the, an email with all that copied in because I'm sure she couldn't take notes and that and the, all those figures when I was um, going through it quickly. Um, and uh, thank Craig Morrison for putting uh, doing the research on it. Mr Mayor, thank you very much. Any supplementary question? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I just have a question. First of all, thank you very much indeed, Councillor Ari, for um, offering to send that to me. I was scribbling frantically, and it's, and it's a great, <laughs> Sorry, <buddy. laughs> a great relief on everybody getting. And also a big thank you to Craig for putting those numbers together. I do have a supplementary, however. Um, I estimate, looking at an article from Air Quality News from last year, that over 90% of UK airports are planning to expand increasing predicted passenger numbers by 54% compared to 2018. So is it congruent with this council's declared climate change emergency for the borough that Southampton Airport plans to contribute to what is effectively turning into a tragedy of the commons? Thank you. The tragedy of the commons, that's an interesting, I take it you don't mean the House of Commons, do you? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying to explain the phrase, you're you all right with it. <laughs> I, I, I'm OK with it. I, I think that um, the, I'm a, I don't want to put a, a viewpoint across about the um, application at all. And that's, but my view, view point is that the, so long as the, the level of growth can be capped at that three million per annum um, and the um, uh, <clears throat> um, air side um, transport arrangements can be improved and for further um, levels, percentages of people travelling by rail, for example, then I find that personally acceptable. Thank you. Thank you. We move on to item 14 now. Councillor House, would you please move that the items listed at section 14 of the agenda? Yes, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I move the complete list. Councillor Bickner seconding it. 
Yes, yes, Mr. Mayor, happy to second. Any questions? Sorry, Mr. Mayor. All right, we need to vote on this now. All those in favor, can you unmute and signal your agreement? In favor. Agreed. Agreed. Those against? Any abstentions? Right, that's it. Councillors, thank you. This now concludes this meeting. Our next scheduled council meeting will be on Thursday, 20th May 2021 at 7 p.m., which will be mayor making, including the AGM. May I take this opportunity to wish those that are standing in the forthcoming elections. Good luck to all of you and thank all those that are not for their service in the past. May I wish all councillors, staff and those watching at home good night. 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 Good night.